race gets underway then. And let's see who makes a good stop. Well, I can see the pole, the race one winner, James Jessup. Uh, Jessup was a bit uh, boxed, it, boxed in, but uh, we'll have a look at who's going to lead into the first corner. It looks like it's the car from the outside of the front row, Martin Bug, that's got the lead. There's one sideways, though, and there's a coming together. Oh, just managed to avoid a coming together. That was Jessup. No, it wasn't. It was Chapman that was the car that was sideways, I think, and that lost a lot of places. Jeff Humphries is trying to go around the outside of him. Joe Jessup trying to go up the inside of both of them, but hasn't really made up many places yet. But it's 14 that leads. Martin Bug that leads then from 13 in second place. That's Travis Patterson as they filter down the Cooper Strait towards Surtees for the first time. We'll try and pick up how many places have been picked up by the lead. The winners for the first race towards the end of the lap, but the sideways goes the leader. That's Martin Bug. Oh, and the Autograss racer, used to being sideways, got it sideways just where he didn't need to be there. He's got James Mansell caught up in that as well. Martin Bug's race looks to be over already as he's just peering his way back onto the grid. And who does that leave in the lead? It's Travis Patterson that leads, I think, at the end of the first lap, but our timing screen hasn't yet updated itself, which isn't particularly helpful. Um, but looking out of the window, it is, yes, Patterson ahead. And it's 21 that uh, appears to be second. It's Nathash Nathaniel James, isn't it? He's yep. made his way really well through, and he's going to take the lead now, coming down into Graham Hill Bend. And uh, a great job from him, Miles Nathaniel James. And uh, in... I think, was that Tim Adams up there behind? I think it might well have been. Yeah. It's Tim Adams, I think, who's just come through up into second at that point. Yeah, we'll try and pick that up in a moment, and hopefully our timing screen will be back working. But, yeah, that is the number two car of Tim Adams in second place, isn't it? So he's going really well. Did some uh, racing at Castle Coombe in their Hot Hatch Championship last uh, two seasons ago. But it is now Miles Nathaniel James that comes through at the end of lap two in the lead of the race from Tim Adams in second. In third place, it is the number 13 car of, uh, of Travis Patterson. And in fourth place, it is, I think, Daniel Chapman hum at Humphreys the moment. Is, hum yes, it is, and Humphreys is fifth. And uh, Joe Jessup is sixth, the uh, race one winner and the winner of all of the previous races so far this season. So they're the... Uh, that's, that's Patterson, Chapman and Humphreys, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. So, extending his lead, though, is Miles Nathaniel James, of course, did uh, very well to be second just behind Jessup in race one here. So he's looking perhaps a strong favourite for victory here in this uh, second race of the weekend. Yeah, if he can build a bit of a gap over the first few laps, then uh, he could be home and dry. But Tim Adams uh, is in the middle of that sort of um, buffer zone. And Chapman dives down the inside. Uh, grabs uh, a place into the uh, into paddock from McMullen. And there's Jeff Humphreys up the inside of the 13 car of Patterson as well. So he makes up a position also. Joe Jessup just behind here. You've got no timing tower on your screen, but you're not at any disadvantage over the rest of us because we don't have any <laughs> timing either at this point uh, in the race, I'm afraid. So we're having to do it all by eye. Leaders are making their way through uh, Surtees and McLaren and up to clearways again. It's uh, a decent lead this of perhaps 12 car lengths for Miles Nathaniel James over Tim Adams in second place. He's being caught by the car in third position, which is uh, Daniel Chapman. That's Jeff Humphreys in fourth, isn't it? Uh, and in fifth place, it's the 13 car, which is Travis Patterson. Car that started on pole. That's right. And Joe Jessup is still behind Patterson, isn't he? Mm. And not able to find a way through. So he's losing quite a bit of time, at least a, a second, and second and a half. Behind Jessup is the silver, the yellow-nosed car with the gunmetal back. He's made a rocket of a start from a row three or whatever. And uh, I thought it was going to be really challenging for a top three or four position here. Yeah, that's the number 11 car, is it not, of, uh, of Joe McMullen, who had a relatively lonely first race. Uh, continues uh, to be a bit more involved this time now. That was uh, Daniel Chapman trying to find a way up Tim Adams, who's three-wheeling his way around clearways that time. Jeff Humphreys going to the outside of Chapman as well, so that's those two are going to be side-by-side. Side. That's going to bear fruit for Humphreys because um, he's managed to block Chapman in, 
And, uh, okay, Chapman's got the territorial advantage. Oh, and Chapman outbraked him and gave him a bit of a squeeze on the way in. But um, that was all kind of fair in love and war there. And there was no... Uh, uh, no risk involved. It was all kind of, I'm going to go through it. And now coming up the inside, Humphreys. Absolutely right. So he's not made anything of it yet, though, has he? And neither of them able to find a way past Adams just yet, who's still there in second place, son of the 1999 FIA World Endurance Team 2 89. champion. 89, 89 yeah. yeah. You were... <laughs> Tim Adams, uh, who himself has raced a bit of uh, NASCAR late model in Florida and Wisconsin in the past. Oh, and Chapman's pushing too hard there. I thought he might have been yeah. heading into the gravel lots, trap. Lots of understeer as a result of that. Yeah. And uh, he lost out to uh, Jeff Humphreys. I can see Joe Jessup's now got himself ahead of Travis Patterson as well. And Patterson under pressure from McMullen and the rest. There we can see the one... One six cuff Matthew Morgan amongst them as well, up inside the top ten, I think. So he's going pretty well. We've had about six minutes of this race, so just nine minutes left to go. In this uh, Tikiwa Type R trophy race. Well, the live timing at the moment not working, I'm afraid, so we're having to do all of this by eye. And they come around so quickly that my lap shot's <laughs> blown up as well. Oh I know dear. who's leading, and that's about it. We can try and piece the rest of it together. The leaders are at, uh, at Clearways, and it's oh, and someone's blown up now. That's the car from about 11th place, headed off onto the the grass. The, it is. It's the 116 half Morgan. We're just well, actually, it's not a blow. It's a front uh, suspension, suspension failure collapsed. by the looks of it. It's collapsed, and uh, he's been able to go no further. So that's a very disappointing end to Matthew Morgan's race. He was going pretty well uh, inside the top 10, I think, at one point. So, leader is still uh, the car of Miles Nathaniel uh, James. James in 21. Second is still Adams. Third is still Humphreys, the grey car. Fourth is Chapman, who had that big understeery moment before, a couple of laps ago at Clearways. And fifth is Jessup. Yeah. And you can see on screen at the moment a good battle going on between 86 and 11. So, 86 is Matt Wilkins, who had to start from the back of the grid. He missed the early race. So, he's come through the field quite nicely into a yellow flag zone here so no overtaking at uh, this part of the circuit these two disputing something like seventh and eighth positions something like that halfway through this race now and Humphreys is absolutely in the slipstream of uh, Tim Adams up into Paddock tighter line because it tweaked up going in was uh, fourth place driver which Chapman There we can see on screen now that battle that we're talking about. Jeff Humphries in that number five car, the DH Racing hire car this weekend after the engine went in his own at uh, Croft a month or so ago. But good drive this from Tim Adams to be holding off Humphries and, uh, and Chapman. Joe Jessup starting to close in on them, I think, but I don't think he's going to have time to make too much impression in this race. No, it might be a little bit too late, but there's, uh, there's Adams in the black car. Very one of Humphreys. Yeah, he's third, Chapman fourth, Jessup fifth. As they come through once again, there's that scrap for seventh and eighth. And they're just behind the Travis Patterson car that remains in sixth position, number 13. With six and a quarter minutes left to go in this race. How many laps is that now completed? Most we don't know. We don't know. Um, what have we had? So eight, that must be about, about nine, nine, I think. nine laps, I would think, yeah, that they've completed. And we managed 16 in the earlier race. So that's about right. So chirping of tyres and uh, a bit of banging of um, bodywork there yeah, as well. Wil Wilkins went a bit wide, and I think uh, the 11 car tried to pounce there. Uh, some damage been picked up on one of the cars that's just headed down pit lane. So here's this fight, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th all in one shot. So that's Patterson, the 86 car of Wilkins, the 11 car of McMullen just behind him is the 19 car of Oliver Musgrave, so he's 9th and then 10th is the silver car just behind him which is the 66 car of Ross Bourbon, the ex-Clio racer. So that's 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th on your screen now. Now Travis Patterson 
He's been uh, driving quite a wide car, continues to do so. Wilkins tries to go around the outside of him. They're going to take a door mirror each off if they keep going like that, but uh, no, they've, uh, they've not done so. Down to Graham Hill Bend. Oh, that, that didn't. Um, that, that wasn't kind of cricket, was it? Uh, uh, no, track limits weren't being adhered to there. I think we can say think, that I without too much controversy. The, the, the Honda badge on the front of the car was about where the cone uh, was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes. That, that, that might attract the attention of the officials. Um, but anyway, so uh, that, that's kind of worked in a sense for Matthew Hawkins in that he's got ahead, but. Uh, a dim view may be taken of that. He's got ahead of Travis Patterson, though, uh, with then uh, Musgrave and Borman uh, involved, uh, not forgetting the 11 car of Joe McMullen. Matt Digby just going past our commentary box as well. He's made up some ground from the back of the grid. He must be, I think, 12th at the moment. I think I'm right in saying that. Meanwhile, up front, I can see that... Uh, Joe Jessup in fifth place. He's now nearly with second, third and fourth. And Jeff Humphreys is second now. So Tim Adams has lost out. Uh, he's back to fourth place. So Jeff Humphreys up to second and up to third now is Daniel Chapman. Tim Adams is fourth and Joe Jessup is fifth. But we didn't see how that unfolded. You can't see them on screen now. Yeah, I think the, the tyres are playing a part, aren't they, at this point? Yeah, so we've got three and a half minutes, so probably four laps to go in this race, which must mean that we've had 12 laps completed, uh, I would think, because I think it's probably going to be a 16-lap race once again. There's Humphreys in second place, and he has got probably 30 car lengths to make up to the race leader, so uh, that's not going to happen. No. And Graham Hill Bend and uh, back towards got the impression that Adams' car was understeering more mm. and more as, uh, as the race went on yep so they're turning their way around clearways past the stricken car of, uh, of Morgan that, uh, that stopped with that collapsed suspension 1-6 car so here's third and fourth and fifth with uh, Jessup, the winner of the first three rounds just behind. Looks like he's going to be beaten for the first time this season. There's our race leader, though. We've not seen much of Miles Nathaniel James. MNJ, as it says, with his initials on the side of the car, because that's all that could fit on the window. Um, but, uh, but he's driven very well here. It's MNJ, but not Matt Nickel Jones. No, exactly. All three names are uh, different. But he's driven really well here, looking for his first win. He said after the early race, he didn't expect to be right on the pace quite so quickly having come back to racing after eight years away having just dabbled a little bit in Formula Ford 1600 and now opted to join the burgeoning Type R trophy grid he's going to have two more laps to go and he's got a pretty clear track ahead of him as well so I suspect the nerves will be uh, be building inside the cockpit of that uh, Civic EP3 right now Jessup's now ahead of Adams he is. And looking further back as well. Still Ross Borman in tenth place, I think, at the back of the uh, of the group that he's part of. But yes, you're right. Jessup is ahead of Adams and now into fourth place. Therefore, can he get onto the podium here? He could do. Daniel Chapman only a few car lengths ahead of him. Ooh, a lock-up there for Miles Nathaniel James, the race leader. And he'll be mindful of overdriving. He's about to get the last lap board, I think. As 14 minutes have gone by. Yep, last lap board does go out for number 21, Miles Nathaniel James. Second goes the way of Jeff Humphreys at the moment. I just realised we're not going to have any results to give you at the end of this race either, so I'm going to have to try and remember as many cars as they go across the line this time, or next time round. But Miles Nathaniel James looking good for the victory here. Just having a look at uh, look up at the hairpin to see if there's any way that Joe Jessup's going to get onto the podium ahead of Daniel Chapman, but he doesn't look like it. They're down at Graham Hill Bend now. Here's our race leader. Miles Nathaniel James then 
in the number 21 car. 27 years of age from London, a cart mechanic. Privateer entry, ex Aaron Sharp car, this one. Here he comes out of Clark Curve, <coughs> excuse me, up to the line. And Mars Nathaniel James wins round four of the Tagiwa Type R Trophy. Very comfortably indeed from number five, Jeff Humphries. Then it's 104, Daniel Chapman. Joe Jessup is uh, fourth. Then it is the uh, number two car of Tim Adams in fifth. In sixth place, it's number 86, Matthew Wilkins. Seventh place is 13, Travis Patterson. Eighth is number 11. Ninth is... Ah, oh, you see, I knew I'd get, lose one. Uh, Ross Borman is in 10th. Matt Digby, 11th. Uh, we'll work out. It was... Uh, who was it? It was Joe McMullen was in there somewhere, wasn't he? In about 9th place, I think. And 10th place was Ross Borman. And 11th was Matt Digby. And that is as much as I managed to, uh, <laughs> to get, I think, as they came across the line without the benefit of a timing screen. The rest of the field are still flowing through now. But... Uh, that was a really good drive from Mars Nathaniel James because he got out in front relatively early on and just got his head down, Marcus. Yes, that's kind of what he said he was going to try to do, and, uh, and he pulled it off. OK, uh, there were one or two dramas along the way, but uh, nonetheless, he was in the right place at the right time, didn't put a wheel wrong the whole way through, and didn't look like getting caught, frankly. No, he didn't. And Jeff Humphreys, uh, another second place there for him. I think he'll be pleased with a, another podium finish. He'll want to keep hold of that higher car now, I should think. Higher well car, yeah, yeah. Wheel it out yeah. for the next one. Yeah, and, uh, and Joe Jessup fourth, uh, just behind Daniel Chapman, who's had another podium there. So I would think it's probably going to be those three, Jessup, Chapman and Miles Nathaniel James, that are going to be very closely bunched in the... Uh, championship after this weekend's racing and again they go to Mallory Park in three weeks time for their next two rounds of the championship exciting round there certainly will be be great racing at Mallory uh, with a, a big grid of uh, Civic piling into cars. Gerard's could you imagine yeah, it absolutely right look forward uh, to seeing that so we've got the cars coming down the pit lane now those that aren't stopping to talk to Josh Barrett anyway uh, they'll be heading back into uh, their respective pit garages, <coughs> which they've been occupying today. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to head downstairs to Josh Barrett shortly. Uh, in fact, we can go right down, go down there right now. So, Josh, over to you in the pit lane. So, another exciting race in the Tegira. Type R Trophy, the race uh, winner has arrived without his car. Uh, Miles, a congratulations on a, a great victory and a brilliant first lap. Honestly, I didn't know how that was going to go. I spent the last 30 minutes formulating it all in my head. I finally got a good start because in the first race, my first gear popped out. That's why I lost a few positions. Um, got up to the inside of Traffic King and then went round Paddock Hill and just left the door wide open. So then I ended up in third place and then so a bit of a rush right now. And then just picking my way through, but maturely though, I wasn't rushing it. And then once I got in front, I just kind of managed my pace. I wasn't going as quick as I could have done, but I was just keeping it safe and consistent. I didn't want to throw the win away. So. And that's your first winning cars? It is actually. I wasn't expecting it today. I mean, I knew the pace was there, but I wasn't sure how that first race was going to go starting in ninth. Yeah. But I managed to pick our way through in a few laps. So yeah. And now, I guess this makes the championship quite a serious thing going forward for the rest of the year. I know. I mean, I thought it would be like maybe midway through the season that I'd start racing at the front, but it seems to have happened straight <laughs> away. Um, I'm still a little bit like, it hasn't quite sunk in yet. Well, congratulations. Well done. Big effort from you. I'd like to thank my sponsors, R2 and Rare Imports. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Well done, Miles. In second place was Jeff Humphreys. Jeff, uh, plenty of overtaking to do in that one. It went quite well. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was good. I enjoyed that one. A bit more. A bit more so than the first one, to be honest with you. Yeah, the first one was a little bit of a disappointment going from pole back to third, but no, it was good. And these reverse, reverse grids really sort of spice things up, particularly on a track like this. Absolutely, yeah, and it makes it makes it fun, and it gives it an opportunity for the, the people that you know can't drive quite as quick as others to get up around the front and, and has, hustle with the quick boys. And you said about this being a rental car. Is this a car you're going to race a bit more going forward? It's, oh, no. it's not quite. The, <laughs> you might want to rent it back to me after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's close racing, isn't yeah, it? Out absolutely, there? yeah, it's brilliant. 
Really oh. good. Well done. Good to see you back on the podium this weekend. Then in third position was Dan Chapman. Third uh, on the podium this one, Dan. Well done. And a real close battle there with you and uh, with Jeff and Tim, I think. I think so, yeah. It was it was close all the way through. Um, but it also makes it good, doesn't it? Same, same class, well, same car championship. You can't beat it. And uh, obviously at uh, Croft, we saw Joe pulled away a bit in that battle there. But today, it's been really tight, really close uh, racing. I think that's the benefit of Brands Hatch. It brings everybody so close together. So, I don't know, really. I, I think it, it, you know, it's, it's so technical, it's a hard circuit. Yeah. And is it, although, it, like you say, it's quite short, but plenty of um, difficult corners. So does that take a little while to get your head around? Yeah, it does. And it's not my favourite circuit. I, I do struggle around here. So to get a podium, I'm over the moon. I think uh, up next, some, some new circuits on the calendar as well. Oh, I don't know. I think Mallory Park. Oh, yeah, Mallory. There's Mallory next. Yeah. So, And we we went there uh, a few years ago before it was the actual championship. Yeah. So so it'd be good to have quite a few cars around there now. Yeah, I think that would be quite exciting racing around there, I'd imagine. Oh, it's a small circuit, in it? So <laughs> I imagine it'll be good. It'll be good. Well, good luck with that and the rest of the season Thank as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. So that's... Uh, the Type R Trophy racing for the weekend completed. We have one more race uh, to look forward to um, today, and that is for the Swallow Hill Homes F1000 Championships, the quickest cars here at Brands Hatch. Up next.